there can't be like a, a marketing uh, rep metric report and a sales report and have those two be completely different things. Welcome to The Forecast, Molly St. Louis here with a question for CROs and sales leaders. How are you leveraging your marketing department? If you have a less than harmonious relationship between marketing and sales, two revenue generating departments, or even if you want to know how to make a good relationship great, keep watching. We recently had Rev CRO Wade Burgess on The Forecast to discuss the future of CROs and he gave us some very interesting insights about the relationship between marketing and sales. Every salesperson out there will tell you that they need more leads and they need better leads and it's marketing's fault that they're not hitting their quota. And if the marketing person out there will tell you like we are flooding this team with leads and they're just dropping the ball and they're not handling them all and, and customer success would say both of those organizations send really bad stream problems to us and this is like we feel like my door should say remember where it goes when you flush on it. Yes. Marketing and sales need to raise their collaboration, especially in these remote circumstances. And we are thrilled to welcome HubSpot's VP of Marketing, Megan Keeney Anderson here today to discuss how we can bridge the gap. Megan, great to see you here on The Forecast. Thank you, I'm excited to be here. I love this series. Oh, thank you. Well, we're very excited to talk about that fascinating study you conducted. So. When COVID hit, you and your team at HubSpot measured the impact on 70,000 sales teams worldwide. And there were some very interesting findings about the relationship between marketing and sales messages. Can you walk us through that? So we realized, you know, we're sitting on a bunch of data from around the world. Um, HubSpot's got more than uh, 70,000 customers. And so at that time, we sort of pulled all that data of how are they doing on sales? What's their, what do their pipelines look like? What do the close rates look like? What we found, unsurprisingly, is that sales volume was down, both in pipeline and in terms of, um, of close rates. We also found that, unsurprisingly, when the crisis first hit, sales activity spiked. So th these are, you know, your, your hardworking sales reps trying to um, drum up any kind of business. So they, you saw the number of sales emails going out rise. Um, you just saw that activity grow. But at the same time, on the other end, response rates were plummeting, right? So it seemed like a very dark picture for sales. But then when you look to the marketing side of the same companies, the same aggregate set of data, we found something really interesting. And we found that mark where sales emails had um, declined in open rate, marketing emails had seen a similar spike. They were sending more marketing emails in the early days after COVID, but open rates and engagement rates on marketing emails completely rose with that. Second point that was interesting, we saw a serious, serious spike in website traffic across all of our, um, all of our customer bases. Uh, we saw a similar, actually a really strong spike in what we call conversations, which are when somebody uses like Facebook Messenger or um, website chat to try to engage with a sales rep or a marketer um, or, or customer support. What we found is it really centralized around educational content, um, you know, learning everything you can about a company or a product but not quite down to the point of sales. That's very interesting, Megan, and particularly good intel for revenue leaders. So I'd love to have Clary's Chief Revenue Officer, Kevin Canerium, to weigh in. Hey, Kevin. Hey, Molly, how are you? Good, good, good to see you. So what do you think of these trends and what they mean for the relationship between marketing and sales? Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the typical, right, historically has been marketing says I'm getting plenty of leads and sales says I'm not getting enough or they're not the right quality. And the only way this works is if you have a really good working relationship between the two organizations. It starts with having one shared KPI, one shared metric, which is important to both organizations. What we did on the Clary side was we said our sales stage one, which is essentially a sales accepted lead, is that common shared KPI that we're working toward generating, right? Marketing's job is to get that to the sales org and the sales org's job is to progress that through the funnel um, or to send it back through for more nurturing. Um, Megan, what do you think? I think what it means is that that relationship has got to get a lot more precise, 
right? The, the two teams have to be in sync when it comes to where are we going to try to drive business um, with what prospective buyers and what industries. And so you can't have a world now where marketing is just off doing whatever it feels like doing to generate demand. And that's detached from what sales is hearing and seeing um, on the, I was gonna say on the sales floor, but on their Zooms and on their, on their uh, digital spaces, you really have to have that conversation between the two teams to determine that joint strategy because it is so uneven right now that you've got to get surgical in what you're going after. Really, really great intel for sales pros and particularly chief revenue officers. So Kevin, do you have any tips about how revenue executives can use these trends to better inform their strategies? Great, great question, Molly. And so you think about the, the role of the CRO, right? It's, it's not just a sales leader. It's, a, it's a, you know, a general manager of the business who's also got responsibility for go-to-market planning. In this environment that we're in, you know, our boards and our leadership are asking for greater visibility into what the out quarters look like and to where the company's going. So the ability for sales and marketing together to provide a level of revenue confidence that's forward looking, that's out at least four quarters, if not farther, and the ability to understand that the pipeline that's being created today is quality pipeline that is going to lead toward future revenue. And again, if you're not aligned on how that pipeline is being created against which targets or against which personas, then you're never going to be able to have that out quarter revenue confidence. Megan, how can sales and marketing collaborate better? The foundation has to be there. And by foundation, I mean, you literally have to be reporting off the same data. You've got to have an agreement on what does success look like and what are the metrics we're going to report on every month. And there can't be like a, a marketing uh, rep metric report and a sales report and have those two be completely different things. You guys should be reporting off the same data and goals and targets uh, to eliminate any of the friction of just misalignment in um, or misunderstanding in what you're going after. I think shared data, shared benchmark, shared goals, are all really important. Um, we, a number of years ago, set up an SLA between our sales and marketing team about, you know, not just the number of leads that we're going to deliver uh, as a marketing team, but the quality of those leads. No marketer wants to generate a bunch of leads that don't get worked. Um, and no sales rep or leader wants to, um, wants to sit there and get a bunch of leads coming in if they know that those leads are going to be a waste of time. So, we got on shared decks, we got on shared um, goals, and we, we set up a contract between the teams that was really mutually beneficial. Um, and then we just talked to each other. Thoughts, Kevin? Yeah, gr great idea, Megan. And you know, as I think through, right, it's, it's the most important thing is that we're on the same page, sales and marketing. The most important thing is that we view ourselves together as the go-to-market engine for the company. Um, and I, I agree that shared KPIs, you know, be it that lead, but also making sure that that lead is of quality, that that lead is against the right persona. And then we have a feedback loop based on what's working and what's not working. And we address those things on a weekly basis versus, you know, we, we come back together at the next quarter and sort of redefine, right? It's got to be a continuous process. Great conversation, you two. And I'm sorry to say we're almost out of time. So Megan, I'm gonna give you the final thought here. What is your forecast for the future of RevOps? I think it's going to become incredibly important. I think people in the past sort of saw RevOps as sort of like this mechanic that, hey, they, they stitch together all the systems and they find out where things break and they do some reports for us. And I think what we're gonna see over the next couple of years is RevOps going from the mechanic to the true engineer and helping to build those systems to begin with, helping to get the bird's eye view of the entire company operations, really having a, a strong hand in strategy for the business, being having that seat at the table right next to you know the CEO and your chief revenue officer and your head of product. I think they are the only people who have the full view of that customer experience end to end. And 
all the nuances that come with that. That's just an incredibly powerful thing to have. I think the smart companies will uh, will give RevOps the the respect and the um, and the opportunity to use that and really lead to help scale the next stage of growth for your company. Yes, customer experience and longer discovery cycles in this remote world have made it even more crucial for sales to tightly align with marketing. And as you think about how to do this with your own team, you might try HubSpot's SLA approach. Many thanks to Megan Keeney Anderson and my co-host for the day, Kevin Canerium, for their great insights. And many thanks to all of you for watching. And as always, stay healthy, stay focused, and stay connected.